Good afternoon. God bless you for those who are preparing for Shabbat, the Sabbath. God bless you. Shabbat Shalom. To those who do not keep Sabbath, God bless you. For those who remember that there is a rest for the people of God, God bless you. My name is Apostle Sean Simpson, Assistant Pastor, St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church, founder of Battle Faith Ministries, hyphen LRMG, Director of, Religi of Religious Education, Life Ripples Ministries Global Faith Community Bible Institute, Cleveland, Ohio. And we're about to go over the Sunday school lesson. And we're still talking about covenants and signs. Uh, the Bible says signs, wonders, and signs, miracles, and wonders do follow the word of God. And we're in this fall quarter. And we're in the final of unit one. That is, we're talking about the new heart, the spirit-filled heart. For those of you who have come from a Pentecostal background, we understand that the first sign of being spirit-filled is that you speak with other tongues as the spirit gives you utterance. And the Bible does prove that. In Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 46, and my personal testimony, which comes from Acts 19, 1 through 7, bless God. But there is some fruit of the spirit-filled heart. And I believe that once we go through this lesson, a change of heart, what God does, and not only the new birth, but in the spirit field, which leads to a, the spirit field of life. And of course, my favorite, one of my favorite texts comes from Romans 5 through 5. That is the 5 and 5. And that scripture simply says that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts via the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Both are correct. Because it's the same Greek word, Numa, in the Hebrew, Ruach HaKodesh. Let us pray before we go into our study. Father, according to your word, your holy word, it tell you, your word teaches us to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, Father, as we approach this lesson, we approach it reverently and respectfully in the name of Jesus, and we thank you that your word is life to them that find it, and that it shall not return to you, Lord, but shall accomplish that thing which you said it would do. Father, I decrease that you may increase, and Lord, I humbly ask that those that you have given me in this life shall know that I am whom you sent me to be. And I pray according to the word of God that you have reminded us that whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Father, we bind Satan, principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. And Father, as I lift my hands to you, holy hands without wrath and doubt, I lose the spirit of research. We were told to search the word. And I decrease that you may increase that it be none of me. I humble myself before the mighty hand of God. Therefore, I ask that you fill me with the spirit of wisdom, the revelation of the knowledge of you. As I everything I say shall be according to the oracles of God. 
according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust. In Jesus' name I give you glory. Amen. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 22 through 32 states, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? A new heart also I will give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart from out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall teach my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people. And I will be your, be your God. I will also save you from all your uncleanness. And I will call for the corn and will increase it. And there is no more famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach of a famine among the heathen. Then shall ye remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good, and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord God. Be it known unto you, be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. The unifying lesson principle is people stubbornly follow their own agendas without regard to the impact of their actions on those they respect and admire. What will motivate these persons to change? God will give them new hearts and put a new spirit in their hearts. In the golden text is verse 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. The background scripture are Ezekiel book comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapters thirty six and thirty seven, and from Titus one through eleven. That's where we get that famous scripture: "Ye are." sanctified through the washing of the water of the word. Praise God. A spirit-filled heart, the adult lesson, a change of heart. Uh, From a human perspective, for the most part, their hearts function fine. However, when it comes to our spiritual hearts, we have a lot more people with spiritual heart disease. Why is that? Well, God desires more than lip service. We have to do more than just go through the motions. When I was DJing, there was a popular R&B group named Jodeci. Their first hit was a song called Let's Go Through the Motions. They were talking about a relationship between a man and woman. Yet, God says, I don't want to go through the motions with you anymore. I want your heart. I want you to take a look at yourself and see how truly messed up you are without me. And what I'm doing for you, I'm doing for my mercy, for my grace. For my glory, I'm doing it for me, not for you. Because you've been cussing me out in front of the 
in front of the nations, in front of the heathen, that don't respect me because they don't respect me because you don't respect me, my God. Pastor Alan Carr shared the following story about not serving God from the heart. I have an old pocket watch. It looks like any other pocket watch. It has a case, hands, and a face. It has a chain, chain and all the requisite parts that are necessary for it to be carry out its function as a timepiece, however. There's a problem with this watch. See, it just won't run. Why not? It won't run because it has a problem with its heart. Inside the case, there's a spring that is the heart of the watch. The spring is essential to the proper operation of this watch as a timepiece. That spring, the heart of this watch is defective. How the problem with the watch is a problem, there's a problem of the heart of this watch. There are plenty of people in the church and its religious circles who are just like this watch. On the outside, they look fine. They appear to be religious and they do good things, but they cannot function as the way that they were designed to function. They, were, they cannot truly worship God and bring glory to him because they have a problem. They cannot be rarely seen by a mere surface expectation of their lives. There's a problem with their hearts. While a God may, while a person may not know another person's heart, God does. He knows all about what is inside of you and me. He knows what makes us tick. In this passage, Jesus deals with some people who are suffering from spiritual heart trouble and do not even know it, but he does, and he takes the time to expose the true nature of their hearts, as he does. He also gives us some principles by which each of us can look at our own heart and determine if there may be a problem Biblical background. Who was Ezekiel? He's he, from a priestly family. He was a major prophet who had been taken from into Babylonian exile some twelve years before he wrote chapter thirty-six. When he was twenty-five and trained to be a priest, Ezekiel was taken into Babylonian exile along with about ten thousand of Judah's top leaders, soldiers, and skilled craftsmen, sitting in his own home in the small village of Tel Aviv, near the Chiba River. Ezekiel prophesied for about 22 years, although he was a contemporary of Daniel's. It is uncertain whether he, whether they ever met each other. It is likely, though, that Jeremiah may have been a mentor to a young Ezekiel while Jeremiah was preaching in the last years of Jerusalem. Ezekiel is part of a, <clears throat> excuse me, of consul Ezekiel 36 is a part of is a section of consolation composing chapters 33 through 48 chapters 34 through 46 provide a vision of Israel's reproof and restoration these chapters are sandwiched between Ezekiel's explanation of the fall of Jerusalem and his vision of the dry bone of the valley of the dry bones some Bible scholars compare Ezekiel 36 to the new covenant text in Jeremiah 31 through 31 through 34, verses 22 through 32, draw upon other sections of the book of Ezekiel, attempting to explain what Israel's restoration would mean. In total, this portion of Ezekiel underscores the point. This portion of Ezekiel underscores the point that both former miseries and the future prosperity of the house of Israel come from God, in keeping with those quarters emphasis of biblical covenants. Today's lesson involves three covenants, the Abrahamic, Mosaic, and New Covenant. Under the Abrahamic covenant, God made his promise that Israel would occupy their land into perpetual, perpetual, perpetu oh, sorry, perpetuity, but not but necessarily continuously. The Mosaic covenant underscored the need for Israel to be faithful to God, to enjoy the blessings of their special relationship with God. If they did not, punishment was sure to follow, and it did. Finally, 
Ezekiel's glimpse into the future saw the eventual restoration of Israel in the time when God would establish the new covenant with his chosen people. Let me explain something to you. The Bible says, all are not Israel that call themselves Israel. That means you must have a fellowship with the Father. That means you must have a, oh, excuse me, that means you must have a relationship, fellowship with the Father. That means you must be willing to obey. The Bible says if you are willing and obedient, you should eat the good of the land. If I want to understand, uh, uh, to enjoy God's promises of prosperity, I must obey what his word has to say on this subject. That means I must do what he says do, live like he says live, say what he says for me to say, and love on everyone. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to your house today to speak deliverance to the captives and the opening of the prisons to them that abide. My God. Under the Abrahamic covenant, the new covenant comes to being one. We understand the new covenant is written upon our hearts and in the tablets of our hearts and in our minds. Therefore, in our spirit, man, we want to serve God from our hearts, not just lip service. She, the Father, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit all said these words. This people honors me with their lips, but in vain do they worship. God wants the worship to be from kingdom hearted, not religious folk. Kingdom hearted, kingdom minded folk understand that this new mind, this new heart, comes to break us better, comes to help us love like he loves, sees as he sees, hears as he hears. Therefore, we don't look at any man after the flesh. We look at them after the spirit. Why must God give us a new heart? Because our old hearts are stony. Our old hearts are, are wicked. Our old hearts, my God, are profane. Let's get into the lesson. Restoration, part A. Therefore, Say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went, and I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes, for I will take from you among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. What a promise. What a promise. A promise from God. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profane among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I'll take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. When did this happen? 1967. They had what is known as the Seven-Day War. 
six day war. Sorry. When General Moshe Diane went and got before the Western Wall and knelt and began to weep, said, We have came to the holiest of sites and never to leave again. What happened? In 1948, the Council of Treaty brought Israel back. Israel was proclaimed a nation before the United Nations. My God. Restoration claim. In Ezekiel, in chapters 33 to 39, Ezekiel took great pains in sharing God's restoration message about a reunited, reunited Israel, just as he had promised. Ezekiel closed with a prophecy about God's glory returning to a future temple. In chapter 36, Ezekiel recorded the Lord's words spoken to the nation of Israel. The Lord said he was prepared to act, to bring Israel back to himself in a future day. In that future day, the Lord said he would regather Israel from among the nations where they had been scattered. After the message of the future blessing in verses 1 through 15, Ezekiel began a, a message about Israel's renewing, renewal in verse 16. In verse 22, God offered an explanation of why he would restore Israel. It would not be because of them. No, he was going to restore the house of Israel for his name's sake. The Jewish people had profoundly profaned God's name. What did that mean? It meant that they had made God's name among the nations. Once so highly revered, meant nothing more than a commonplace name with little meaning and carrying no sense of fear and awe. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but fools despise reproof and instruction. How dare you make the name of the Lord your God be counted common. The name of Jesus is not common. The name of Yahweh, which if it's truly revered according to Jewish customs, is only spoken once a year. That's how much much fear. The true fear of the Lord comes in becomes real. Not because of some religious thing, but because I want to do it. Because I Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Without the fear of the Lord, you have nothing. And then it says it's supposed to be sacred, holy, sanctified. Yahweh, Machadesh. I am the Lord who sanctifies. In other words, God had to sanctify his holy name after the Jewish people had so profaned it in their rank disobedience. Rank disobedience. That means you just chose to disobey, even though you knew right from wrong. Now, I'm not putting nobody down who mess up because we all sin. We all sin. Please believe that. But once you know better, you do better. You sin less than you did before. Come on. At least make the attempt to. God placed special emphasis on his name in the book of Ezekiel, using the phrase, my holy name, some eight times in the prophet's book. If you do not understand that the name of God is so holy, so sacred, so, pass your name. When you speak that name, you should say, he is the one I serve. He, Yahweh God, is the one I know to be my heavenly father. He, Yahweh God, is the one who came wrapped up in flesh in the form of the Lord Jesus Christ, the very Son of God. He is the one, that the Yahweh God is the one who came after 
this Jesus was ascended into heaven and left his power with all that would have faith and live in faith. Faith without obedience is dead. Why? Because obedience is a sign of good works. They had become professional sinners during the entire existence of the northern kingdom of Israel and during most of the later years of the southern kingdom of Judah. So, so they had no reason to boast when God brings them back to the promised land. If it were truly based upon their behavior, they would have never returned. Disgrace. Undeserved faith. God favored us not because of ourselves, but because of his holy name. That's more reason to lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Because we're, we're, our own righteousness is filthy rags. I'm not going to say what the Bible don't say. I'm going to say what it says. It says it's as filthy as it's filthy, our own righteousness. He is our Yahweh Sikinu. He is the Lord our righteousness. But without him, oh God, we are a mess. We profane his name when we talk about us. We profane his name. We put our mouths on people. We profane his name uh, when we don't walk in accordance with his word. When we don't walk in love, oh, when we don't walk in faith, when we don't walk in hope, oh God, hope does not disappoint because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is the reason He had to put a new heart in us, a spirit filled heart, a heart that's full of Him, not us, because in our hearts, in our hearts, we mess, we cold, we calculating, we got some evil. Plans. You don't know what you do if it wasn't for the grace of God. So they would have they have no reason to boast when God brings them back to the promised land. That's why you can't boast about the grace because it ain't you. You can't boast about grace, my God. My God, my God, my God. I feel the anointing saints. First, he was going to keep his promise to Abraham. God told Abraham, I'm going to make out of, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And all the nations on the earth are going to be blessed. All the nations of the earth is going to be blessed because of you. Second, he wanted to restore his good name in the land. If you look at the land of Israel, it is it is less than 10% of what it's supposed to be. True, the true Israel, the land of Israel, truly stretches from where it is all the way back to the Nile River. That's how big Israel is. And they lost it because of their disobedience. And we, as a church, are losing our hold because of your, our disobedience, because of our religion, because of our man-made doctrines, because we will not walk in that grace that God gave us. Ooh. Ezekiel 36 and 23 is the only place in scripture where God explicitly acted to sanctify his own name. The Lord said he would vindicate his name among the nations of the world so that the world would come to know that God, that the God of Israel, El Elohi Israel, is the one and true and living God. Praise God, praise him. Awake, O Israel, pull off thy slumber. 
for the truth has made us free. From out of Zion came a deliverer. His name is Jesus Christ, my God. So let us shout the victory that we have. Awake, O Israel, pull off thy slumber, for the truth has made us free. From out of Zion comes our deliverer in the year of Jubilee. In the year of Jubilee. Now let's get into the new heart. He says, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And he shall keep my judgments and do them. He said that the Torah is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, to bring us to faith in Christ, which means what? what? We're going to act upon the word of God when we hear it, and it will be a joy to us to do it. Why? Because he put, oh God, a new spirit, a new heart. He took up the disobedient heart. The, the stony heart. He did a he did a beautiful. He planted a garden in our heart. That what well, and what was the fruit of that garden? The word of God. My God. It's in our. We sing a song. It's in our heart to serve the Lord. Well, praise God. If we really want to sing that song, let us start doing. I feel like preaching now. The blessings of this new heart, and I and ye shall dwell in the land which I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. I also will save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you, and I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field, that ye shall no be receive no more reproach. A famine among the heathen. If you back in the day, if you didn't get a good crop, they the, they thought you were cursed. And in this case, you had brought a curse on yourself because you disobeyed God. You did not keep His word from your heart. God calls us to do His heart. It's a, it's a matter of a heart. It's a heart thing. It's a heart thing. Ah, oh God, I hear the quarterback. I hear the Holy Ghost. Ega, if you will, if you will, set your mind to obey and to understand that God put this heart in you, this new heart, this new spirit in you because of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, not because of you, but just because of who he is. He said he did it. You will understand grace more and you will weep before God, thanking him because he's so kind, so wonderful, so loving that even in your messed up state of mind, even in your messed up state in the spirit, he said, I'll change you. I'll make you new. Finally, Then shall you remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I do I this, saith the Lord God, but be it known unto you, be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. My God. The only thing we have to understand this is the beauty of grace now. He did it for us. He did it for us. If he did it once, he'll do it again. He, he's done it. How many times has the Lord forgiven you when you didn't deserve it? How many times have you gotten things from God that you didn't deserve? You just asked him for it and he just gave it to you anyway. Now that you deserved it, but because of the grace of God, 
we should just enter into worship because that side of the covenant, he wrote the law on our heart. He gave us a new heart. He gave us a heart of flesh for a stony heart. This is why back in the 80s, there was a wonderful song People used to play it in the club, didn't know what they was dancing to. They was dancing uh, to a song uh, called uh, Fall Down, uh, Spirit of Love. Uh, it was by Jermaine Hawkins. Uh, and when they were walking around uh, and they were saying uh, that, oh God, uh, fall down on me, Spirit of Love. My God, when you, if you really listen to those words, the Lord was saying, I'm Backing up what I said in Ezekiel 36, 22 through 32. I'm putting my new, my, I'm putting my spirit in you. I'm pouring out my spirit in you. I'm giving you a new spirit. I'm giving you a new heart, a spirit filled heart, a heart full of me that will do my will. If you want that, somebody shout hallelujah. If you want to realize, you ought to say thank you, Jesus. You ought to tell them thank you sometimes. You ought to tell them thank you. I just gave them thanks. The Bible says when you speak in tongues, you give God thanks. He, I thank you, sir. Thank you for the spirit-filled heart. Thank you for the new heart. Thank you for the new spirit. Thank you for your grace. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I can't thank him enough. I just feel like praising him now. Just like Shelly sees, I feel like praising him. Oh, shouting John. I do feel like praising him. I give him the praise. I thank him because of the spirit-filled heart. My God, what more do you want from him? What more do you want from him? God bless you. God keep you. Now, may the Lord bless thee and keep thee and cause his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance unto thee and give thee peace. Now, may the Lord God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest rule and abide with you both now and forever in Jesus' glorious name. Praise God. Praise God. And praise God.